All right, what's going on everybody? Today I'm going to be bringing you guys a review for Fire Force Episode 2 entitled The Heart of the Fire Soldier. With this week's episode a bit less action-packed and a bit less bombastic when it came to the ending of the episode. And we didn't really get a lot of fighting in this week's episode, but we got the introduction of a new character, uh, the comedy was still good, and the little fight that we get, the little bit of action that we got was pretty good. And I thought overall this was a pretty good episode. So, we got the introduction of a new character, Arthur Boyle. This is a rookie that Shinra met at the academy. He's delusional. He thinks he's a king. He also thinks he's a knight. And he uses a plasma sword. Or a plasma cutter, as the show referred to it. But, let's be honest, it's a freaking lightsaber. He is a obvious rival character for Shinra. Uh, there's a point in the episode where we see these two characters kind of butting heads, kind of trying to outdo each other. There was a there's a scene where they're both eating food with the captain, and I thought that was a great scene. But overall, these the, these two characters are most likely going to be kind of rivals, even though they have to work together on the same team. So they're kind of forced to kind of put their I don't I don't want to really say hatred, but kind of put their their differences aside to kind of get the job done. So uh, there's a funny moment also in this episode. We got Shinra breaking the fourth wall along alongside Arthur. Really, they break the fourth wall when talking. Uh, so like Shinra's talking to Maki and sister about Arthur, and then they just kind of they look to the camera and they basically break the fourth wall there, which I thought was funny. I want to also talk about two characters that I'm really loving so far. Because I noticed throughout this episode, uh, between this episode and, of course, the premiere episode, I can say the characterization, or at least the, the characters so far, uh, when it comes to Maki and the captain, I really love them. Uh, I really kind of love them the most. And usually with these type of shows, I would usually love the rival character or, like, maybe the main character sometimes. But these two characters really stand out to me. So Maki, I talked about last week about her character design. And how her character design is kind of it's kind of deceiving. It's like she's very muscular, like the way that she's kind of the way that she's kind of built, the way the character looks like. She acts completely kind of opposite of that, and I love that. I love her character the most out of everybody. She's strong. She's kind of strong, but it's like it's not in a way where it scripts her away. It scripts any of her of her uh, feminine qualities away, and I like that. That's something that. That's something that, like, people here in the West, like, Hollywood doesn't know how to do that. And, you know, certain shows in general, when they have these strong, these kind of strong characters, they're, like, really kind of, like, physically strong, uh, they can sometimes lean to, lean kind of too far into that to where, like, the characters don't even seem feminine anymore. And I like the fact that she, she still has a feminine side. So uh, we also get to see her use her ability her fire ability, and I kind of talked about that in the last review also, about the fact that she has her ability to basically manipulate fire, kind of create create uh, living fireballs. Now, she can't create fire out of nothing, uh, like like the, um, the third generation pyrokinetics, uh, like Arthur and, Sh and uh, Shinra, but she's a second generation that can manipulate fire and basically... Uh, create living fireballs, which we see in one episode, we see in not one episode, in one scene in this episode, uh, she manipulates fire, and she calls the little, the little uh, living fireball, she calls it sputter, and uh, there's a funny scene where, where Takahisa is extinguishing her fireballs, and I thought that was very funny, uh, the comedy relief, and that's something that I like about this character, because she can be the comedy relief, she can be serious, and she can be strong and powerful, but at the same time, she can be very girly. And I, I like it. I like it. Um, like I mentioned before, we didn't get a big fighting scene. There was a there was a point where there was a point where Takahisa instructs her to basically fight against Shinra and Arthur to kind of see what what they're what they're capable of. And I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, basically, Maki freaking worked them. She manipulate. She manipulated at one point. She manipulates um, Shinra's fire uh, from his feet and create and like 
extinguishes it and then at one point she uh basically manipulates the plasma sort of fire kind of coming out of arthur's uh sword and then uh shinra's fire at, at one point but yeah i thought that was a pretty good uh pretty good scene like i said we didn't get a lot of action this week but what we got was pretty cool i also want to talk about the commander the captain also captain obi i want to talk about him but before i get into that i guess i can kind of talk about the 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 kind of like the last half of the episode where we get to the infernal so uh the the infernal this week we had the daughter there now the daughter um her mother died two years ago well not died but her mother became an infernal two years ago and then her father her father is the infernal in this week's episode uh they get to the house and before they go there captain obi he gives shinra a weapon he gives him an axe and he tells arthur and shinra hey don't let the public see your weapons don't let them see them and they disobey his order basically and then like earlier on in the episode uh shinra he kind of comments he kind of thinks about the fact that the fact that his commander is so laid back and he's wondering to himself you know does anything kind of piss this guy off he's just so laid back and that's something that i actually like about his character too I like the fact that he's kind of laid back. He's very supportive. I like the fact. I like that fact a lot. But there is a line. There's a line, and they almost kind of crossed it. At a certain point, they get to the house. You know, they get to the house where the inferno is. They're about to go in, and then Arthur, he's got his sword out, and they they basically disobeyed his order, and the the captain. He takes them to the side and he's like, he basically wants them to remember that the Infernals were once human and it would be disrespectful uh, to the ones that were left behind because there are people in the Fire Force that do gain some kind of sick pleasure, some kind of thrill uh, when it comes to fighting these Infernals and he doesn't like that. I mean, these people, regardless of their, their current state when they become Infernals, they were still human beings. Their job isn't just to basically get rid of these infernals it's also the kind of comfort the people that are left behind and in this case episode it was the daughter and then last week's episode it was the husband from the factory so this is something that i like about this character the fact that he kind of has his own kind of code of ethics because they mention the fact arthur mentions the fact that okay this wasn't in training like they didn't tell us that oh we we can't we can't let the public see our weapons they didn't say nothing about that when we were at the academy I also want to mention something that I came across while reading the manga in regards to last week's episode that highlights the difference from the manga. In the scene before Company 8 goes into the factory, in the manga, Shinra is questioning himself and has this realization that they're going to be killing an inferno that was once a human being. This was not in last week's episode, but instead we got this scene uh, in this week's episode with the captain scolding Arthur and Shinra about showing their weapons to the public because it's kind of dehumanizing and a bit disrespectful to the people that are related to the Infernal. Overall, I thought this week's episode was pretty good. The animation was good. The the action, the little bit of action that we got was pretty good. The comedy was on point. And the episode ended off on a kind of somber note. But I thought it was pretty good overall. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about this week's episode. Like the video, subscribe, I'm out of here, peace.